Dr. Mark Starpacey here, Craft Hairdresser and co-founder of the Hairbrain Community. Excited to be back at Lanza's headquarters here in Santa Monica. We did a HB Live educational uh, video here a couple of months ago and it was fantastic. We have this incredible healing artist here, Tasha Garut, Hi. who was incredible the last time, shared some beautiful techniques. There were so many great questions. Um, she's got a lot of stuff happening. She's going to be doing some three-dimensional balayage, which we're excited to learn about. She's also going to be doing some styling. So guys, I'm here looking for any questions or comments or shout outs, so be sure to type them in and I'll share them with Tasha. Tasha, tell us all about 3D balayage. Hey, uh, thank you so much for having me back. So what I'm doing right now is basically creating a three-dimensional color with um, placement and also with technique using our clay decolorizer. So I currently have two different bowls of decolorizer that I'm using. Um, one is with 40 volume and one is with 20 volume. And the reason that I'm doing this is because I want to see a ton of dimension in the hair. And sometimes we often think about, you know, using different toners in different areas, but we don't always think about using different decolorizers. So um, what I've done is I've taken the diagonal back section and you want it to be a relatively thick section. Um, you don't want to be able to saturate all the way through. Um, so I've taken this diagonal back because I think that it always looks really nice around the face to have diagonals. And then I'm taking the tip of my comb and what I'm doing is I'm actually carving out almost a zigzag pattern or some triangles. Now this piece I'm going to take and I'm going to remove and I'm going to clip it up. I don't want to saturate all the hair because as we're going into fall, we really love what Michelle has going on. So we've already based her with one of our new colors, which is our four gold. And I love that, but I just want some movement in her hair. So I already love, you know, just like last time, you got so much information out there and such kind of fun stuff. I haven't really seen people, and I've seen a lot of balayage, I haven't seen this kind of zigzag pattern before. It makes perfect sense. Thank you. So what we want too is we want to have a low 45. See how I'm putting tension on this right here? That actually gives me that 3D effect. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my two different decolorizers and I'm just softly painting on one side of it. So this is the brighter one. Uh, and I'm doing that because usually clients like to see a little bit more brightness around their face. And then I'm coming in with my 20 volume and just where my peak meets, I am taking my brush and I am gently placing it down and I am saturating this side. Now the cool thing is, is that this underneath portion, because we did take such a thick section, isn't entirely gonna be saturated, which is really what gives us our third color. And then I'm gonna take my balayage board and I'm gonna come in with my brighter tone and I'm going to saturate the ends here. So I'm using our clay decolorizer, and the thing that I love about it is that we have arginine and we have Vita C complex in it. And this actually allows it to keep the hair healthier, stronger, longer, and it also keeps the product moist longer too. And then it encapsulates, so it's a perfect freehand uh, product to use for this. And that's what a clay decolorizer or clay yeah. is. It's something that puts a shell on the hair. Yes. So so it, it can be kind of open air. But now you've got two different um, two different mi mixtures here. Can you tell us what I do that and why? Um, so like I said earlier, you know, sometimes when we're working, we have a tendency to think more in like maybe different toners or low lights or things like that. But we don't often think of how our decolorizer can work for us. So I like to use two different developers because what this is going to do is going to give me high and so low. So it's both the clay decolorizer. Yes. But they're different developers. Correct. So and we're using 40 volume in one bowl and we're using 20 volume in another. And so these pieces that I'm letting down now, they're going to remain part of the depth that we want to keep in her hair. So I'm just going to let that come down. So I'm assuming that this is the clay decolorizer? Yes, that's our clay decolorizer. And then you can actually mix it in two different types of consistencies. You can mix it at one to one, or you can mix it at one to two, depending on what your preference is. Um, I personally like a little bit more of a fluid feel to my decolorizer, so I mix it at a one to two. So you're saying developer to decolorizer can be equal parts, or it can be double developer. Yeah. And again, does it affect the way it performs, or is that just it doesn't. the consistency? It's just the consistency, which I know industry-wide, like that's not typically something that you know manufacturers will talk about having the uh, creative ability to sort of pull on what you like to use. And it's really important 
art, especially yeah. painting. A lot of painting is about the consistency. Do you change the consistency based on the hair type? Or is it all just based on personal choice? It's personal choice. Mm. With the clay decolorizer, you're still going to get up to seven levels of lift. So, mm. you know, you don't... Seven levels. Up to seven is, levels of lift. Yep. That, is that above average for lighteners? I would say that it is. I would yeah. say that it yeah. is, yeah. yes. Seven levels of lift is pretty awesome. So I'm just gently feathering this in. Again, this is my 40 volume that I'm using. And I'm sticking to one side of my triangle. And notice my brush is flat. My brush is flat because I just want to work on um, the top portion. I'm not looking to go all the way through my section. This is truly a surface painting um, project here that we're working on. And then I'm going to come in with my 20 volume. On the same hair strand. All on the same hair strand, yeah. Because this is what creates the multidimensional effect that we want, right? So when we go and we toner, we can choose one toner. Um, and we'll still have really great highs and lows, not only from that four gold that's already in there, but also from the two different uh, brightnesses that we have with our developers. So if you're just joining us, we're here for Hairbrain Live sharing great education as we do almost every day. Today we are in Santa Monica, California. Let us know where you're watching from. We're in Santa Monica, beautiful sunny day. Hopefully you guys are having great weather as well. We're here with Tasha Grout, who is a Lanza healing artist. She educates, does classes as part of events, and we want to talk a little bit about the big event. Um, and Tasha is sharing with us really some diverse education today, 3D balayage, and then also is going to show some styling. So if you want to see a little bit of everything, stick around for this whole presentation. Now, Tasha, can you tell us about Lanza's big event? I would love to. So super excited for our big event. Every year we come together as a, t a tribe and a team and we have wonderful education. This year I'm super excited to be teaching with Christina Carter and Scott Sieper in Perfect Placement. And I'm also going to be teaching with Sally Lemo and we're going to be doing Blonde Squad. So we would love to see you. Um, I think in the links below there should be actually a promo code I think for yep, all you yep. people. Our friends at Lanza are uh, creating a promo code that will be right here in the comments where you can save 20% off if you want to attend the big event and it'll be my first time attending this year so I'm excited I've heard great things from the team uh, I know Courtney's been before but it'll be my first time and I'm looking forward to all the great inspiration and education if you guys want to join us check out the promo code it's right here I believe it's hairbrain20 uh, it'll be in the comments here all right, let's get back to this incredible education. Before we do, let me give some shout outs because yeah. lots of people, we've got Chris Leader watching in San Diego and Chris Leader uh, thinks that you're an amazing artist. Thank you. Tasha, we've got Reggie James watching from Austin. I love Austin, I'll be there pretty soon. Uh, all the way from Australia, we've got Elaine Dentith. I think I pronounced that right. Wait, let me put my teeth back in. That was a tough one. Teresa Sharp is watching from Georgia and from Scotland. And I, I hope it's sunny in Scotland. I doubt it. It might be raining today. Stephanie Cox and uh, Priscilla Gonzalez from San Antonio. Thanks for letting us know where you guys are watching from. We're here with Tasha, and Tasha's sharing this great 3D balayage. If you guys have questions, please type them in so I can ask Tasha. Yeah. So um, we're working all the way into this top section here. I'm keeping the tension really strong on this strand because this is also what's giving me that 3D feel which helps guide my brush. So it's really, the thing that I love about it is I like things that are easy and simple. And I think sometimes as hairstylists, I don't know about you, but I sort of sometimes get in my way of like overthinking things. And this technique really does help me because it guides me too, you know, with this, uh, placement that we have and the brush really just does want to stay on its own side so I'm using my 40 volume clay to colorizer in my front section and then on my back part of this strand I'm using my clay to colorizer with 20 volume and that's going to create a ton of highs and lows in the hair as well as what she already has existing Heidi Harari is wondering if you can go over the developer again uh, yeah, I'd love to. which one are you using where because I know you've got two Kelly, I think, can you see that we've got two mixtures here? So we've got two mixtures using the clay to colorizer, and one's with 20, one's with 40? One's with 20, one's with 40, and what I do is I actually keep a clear bowl, and that's like my lighter or my higher color that I'm using, and then I have a darker bowl with a darker brush as well, and that's how I can kind of tell the difference, especially when I'm using the same type of decolorizer um, in 
in one strand like this. So again, people typically want to see a little bit more brightness around their face, which is why I'm choosing to use the stronger developer, the 40 volume. I'm using that on the front strand. So again, this is creating a beveling effect and that's because I'm pinching it and I'm holding tension and I'm holding it at a low 45. And then I'm coming in with my brush and this is my 40 volume clay decolorizer. And I'm just gently brushing that on that front side. So the actual elevation, you know, for those of us that cut in style, we learn all about elevation. So you're saying you're, even as you're coloring here, elevation is important. Elevation is important. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Elevation, over direction, all of it. You know, we're staying within the streamline. I'm standing right in front of my work here. That low 45 really does make a big difference in how I'm able to feel. Because if I were to change it, you know, it does. It buckles it. Uh, it buckles yeah. it, exactly. So I really want it to be a smooth yeah. transition, especially and with you're balayage. you're using plenty of tension as you're pinching. Plenty of tension. So I've got a really good grip here at the bottom. And I'm pulling that just taut enough so I don't, awesome. you know abuse my client because that would suck. I've got another <laughs> question. So I know you're using a clay lightener, so it yeah. looks like a, kind of a shield on it. But I, I, sometimes people still use plastic or cotton. Yeah. What, when, why do you choose not to? Um, so with our clay, we don't have to, you know? So, so again, it won't rub off on the other hair? No, yeah. it won't. So it's gonna completely create a hard shell around itself so that way it can work by itself. So literally this makes, as you're painting, it makes a clay shell, so it, you, it just stays right where you put it. Exactly. And that's what, it's designed for these type of freehand balayage painting, yeah. Exactly. So I'm just dropping these pieces, and these are going to remain like part of our depth that we're working with. And believe it or not, we've already worked through our first side, so I'm just going to turn her. Right, as you do that, we have a yeah. fashion question coming in okay. from Tracy uh, Kulas. Wondering about your apron. Ooh. It's so hard to find a crossback apron. I think this looks like it's a Lanza apron. She's it's wondering. a Lanza apron, yes. Yeah. So we have a swag shop um, that you can purchase it from. Or it'll probably be at the big event, right? It will absolutely yeah. be at the big event. Join so. us at the big event and you can get your crossback apron or check out the swag shop and uh, is it Lanza.com? Yeah, at Lanza.com. Yeah. Um, so another thing too that we have that I love is this balayage board that you see me working with. Let's show um, that to Kelly. Yeah, and this is also going to be at our Lanza Big Event. So I love it because it has a handle, it has a curved portion, so it works really nicely against the head. And then if you want to foil with it, you just slip it over and it's got that flat yeah, side. I haven't seen too many yeah. with the handle. I mean, maybe I have, but it automatically it jumps out at me, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's got the handle and the curve. So you can see that I've split from the back of the ear and forward. We're just focusing on this stuff right around her face. Again, I'm making uh, deep peaks because we want to keep as much depth as possible. And then I'm clipping this up out of the way. And these are gonna be my 3D pieces that I paint. So I'm gonna work my 40 volume. Now, did you pre-color Michelle's base? I did. Yeah, so she's actually colored color. with our new 4G or 4 gold. Honestly, I don't know. I was so excited when this color came out, especially like in time for fall, which is that beautiful like richness that she already has. Um, I, I can't get enough of this color, to be honest with you. So I'm excited that she... So if someone's watching and perhaps they're not too familiar with Lanza as a color company... Um, the Lanza Hick Healing Hair Care line. What can you say about the line? Is it a complete line? Do, do you have, it looks like you've got clay lighteners, you've got um, pretty much everything. Can you just give them like a little overview of I'd the color line? I'd love to. Yeah. yeah, so we have our permanent shades and actually with our color line, you can get three in one. So what that means is with one tube of color, you can get your permanent, your demi-permanent, as well as a demi translucent So is, was that with this line here? Yeah. So this is line. your, your main color and you can, based color. on the developer you can change it exactly so i guess that's very economical in terms of it is color and, you know honestly part of our mission as a company is we want stylists to be really successful and sometimes if you have all of your money in your back room you don't necessarily have it in your retail area um and so we created a line that has a three-in-one technology. Also, it really helps with space. I don't know about you, but I'm from San Diego and there isn't a ton of space everywhere. So it really helps keep a low inventory um, and you're able to get full range of any color line. It makes a lot of sense. So that's the Lanza Healing Color and it's a three-in-one color. I'm learning, so I, I like to repeat the things I'm learning. Use a, a different developer will take it from being a permanent to 
a semi to a demi? Is that how it works? To a demi, yeah, and yeah. then to a translucent. So you get almost like a glossing or a glazing right. effect with it. More. And we also have our liquids line, which is super exciting, that we um, recently launched. And we're going to end up toning Miss Michelle when we're done. We're going to be using um, our liquids because that's a deposit only color. And then, of course, we have a range of decolorizers. I am working with the clay today, but we also have a powder. We have a cream. And then we have our new ultra blonding. And we even have fashion tones, which is going to be our vibes line. So we are a full blown uh, color company with something to offer for everyone. All right, Tasha, walk us through the whole thing now because you're starting a new section and some yeah. people are asking about the parting. So Perfect. explain that whole technique to us again. So I want to make sure that my section is relatively thick because with this 3D balayage, the idea is that we're painting two different colors or two different brightnesses um, on one strand of hair. Uh, and then our color underneath, which is this existing color, this four gold that we already have, we want to remain. So I dropped my section. Um, I'm taking triangle peaks or this zigzag pattern and then I'm gonna clip this up and out of the way here. So as you can see, the zigzag pattern, what it allows me to do is it allows me to pick up these sections. And I'm holding this with a lot of tension um, at a low 45, and it creates a peak, a natural peak for me. And typically people wanna see more brightness around the face, so I'm choosing to use my clay to color as a 40 volume, and I'm just painting this one side. So what I love about this is because of this natural peak that this uh, parting creates is that it kind of tells my brush where to go. So there's less oopsies that you have with it. And then I'm coming in with my 20 volume and I'm painting on this back side here. So that way we're gonna get a variation in tonality. So we get this beautiful color melt at the end. And then I'm gonna saturate her ends using my balayage board. Um, I'm going to use a 40 volume because we like that brightness down here. Denise Tillier is watching from Wales and she's wondering if the goal is a sun-kissed effect. It is. We don't want to do anything too crazy, which of course with this technique you could, but I really love the way Michelle looks in these deeper tones. But we're just giving it a lot more movement for fall time, you know? So it's kind of a, a balayage face frame yeah. you know, on this beautiful base. Yeah, and of so. course you could do it in the back, but right here with Michelle, we just wanted to focus in around her So it could area. be a good introduction, introduction for someone exactly. who wants to. Now, the question that always comes up, and I know we all live in different parts of the world in different countries, but how do you price something like this? Do you price it based on your time? Do you, you know, when you're behind the chair working and you want to do like little pops of color like yeah. this, what's a good reference for hairdressers at home to figure out how to price this? Uh, I love that you asked this. So um, something like this, especially because Michelle doesn't have like an overwhelming amount of hair, I would probably charge the same as like maybe like a partial highlight or something mm -hmm. because we're just getting pops of color here. Um, so I really like to just work in this front section, again, like you said, because they get sort of a taste of what it's like to have this multi-dimensional color. Now, you could also saturate a lot more with this, this type of parting. So instead of leaving this out, you could just zigzag through the whole section and then end up saturating everything. Now, I would price that differently. Because you see more color when you're Exactly, because you see more color, there's more impact. Sometimes I, I, I think, and I always say that to, to hairdressers when I think about pricing is, what's the visual impact? Right. You know, it, it isn't always just about time, although time is important, yeah. but you could do something in 15 minutes that every single person that sees them is gonna go, oh my God, you look amazing. And maybe that is worth a little right. bit more money than something you spend an hour on that nobody notices. I agree. So it's just, you know, it's, it, we'll have to own it. We'll have to right. kind of own it. I'm all for like charging what you're worth. And, but you know, the client should see some change in their hair too, you know, when you're done. So I'm clipping this out of my way because again, this is going to end up being my depth and my dimension along with the back side of these pieces. I'm picking up my triangle section. Again, I have a lot of tension. You can see that um, it's created its own peak there. I'm going to take my 40 volume. And again, this is where over direction really comes in too, because around these face framing, if you notice, she's got some of these little flyaway pieces. So I'm gonna move this sort of, just over direct it a little bit back so it makes it a little bit easier for me. Um, that way I'm not 
kind of getting it everywhere. And what falls out is that's okay yeah, because so we have say, that third color. Is it better color. not, you know, if someone has some finer hair around the hairline, or, is it better not to paint that, let it drop out? Um, in this specific technique, and because we don't want it to be like overly blonde or too light, I'm going to let it fall out. Because yeah. remember, this backside is not saturated at all. And that's why I call it a 3D because it's, it's that third color that's on the bottom that you're not using. So in this case, I actually think it really works for us that we're letting that fall out there. Excellent. Everyone at home, if you're just joining us, George Carpacey here, craft hairdresser, co-founder of the Hairbrain community, bring you yet another great educational event. I'll call it an event, why not? We're back with Tasha Garut, who is uh, a Lanza healing artist. That's a special t a term they use for their educators because that's what their brand is about. It's about healing hair, hair care. We're here at their uh, HQ in Santa Monica having a great time. Let us know where you're watching from and if you have any questions for Tasha. Once she finishes this 3D balayage, it's gonna process. And while processing, she's gonna do some beautiful styling here on Natasha. And you can see this beautiful red that uh, Tasha colored earlier today. So we'll talk about the red formula and we'll go into some styling. But let's come right back over and let's watch Tasha finish up this 3D balayage. Yeah, so we're just kind of working into our last sections here. Um, again, we want to just keep it around her face because we're just trying to create some brightness. Um, I've created a zigzag pattern. What that does is it allows me to have this peak and valley. And what we're doing is we're creating um, multi-dimensional by using two different clay decolorizers. So I'm using 40 volume in one bowl and I'm using 20 volume in another. And I'm painting one side with my bright color. So I'm actually using the one that's 40 volume that's closer to her face because that's typically what clients like to see. And then I'm using my 20 volume and I'm painting this back side here. Um, so what I love too about this is that I've dropped some sections in between, but you know, I, I always like to encourage people to really use their imagination when it comes to doing hair. Because even though I'm using decolorizer right now, I absolutely use this technique with our healing color. Um, so you, you don't have to always just use two different decolorizers, but I like to like push the imagination. A lot of times we think about toning with multiple colors, but we don't always think about um, using two different decolorizers. So I'm creating a zigzag pattern here. Tasha, some of the, yeah. uh, the, the people watching are wondering about uh, Michelle's hair. Is it previously colored? It or is. Or is that a natural? So this is previously colored with our four gold. So she has a lot of richness in here and we're just creating pop and depth with our uh, 3D balayage. So that's at the 4G, that's from this. It's our 4G, hair yeah. Color. yeah. So it's, it's one of our new colors that we just launched that is super exciting to me because even on its own, it's the most beautiful, rich color that, I mean, I have ever seen. It's just, this is just 4G that's on her hair. So I find it absolutely stunning. And I know like this coming fall, it's gonna be one of my most requested colors that I have. So it's beautiful. So I'm gonna paint on this back side here with my 20 volume. So that way I'll have multi-dimension. And then I'm gonna saturate the ends here with my 40 volume. And why do you choose to use the board at the ends? Is it obviously to give you some stability or? Some stability, but also that's the only thing where I really want saturation. On the rest of it, I like that there is, it's not fully working through that whole section. Okay, but down so here, the idea I want more is brightness. to just get on the top and be yeah. very gentle as you go towards the end, saturate it more so it, it becomes more all the way around the cuticle. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why I'm choosing to use my brush. Um, just like flat and with my section, I'm just gently coming in here. And even with this skinny piece, you can see because of this parting, it's really easy for me to just do this small amount. Um, and then I'm gonna paint the back side again, keeping my brush flat here. And then I'm gonna saturate the end. So that's why I take my board and I use my 40 volume. This is something I remember from the last time that it, it, it has no kind of ammonia type smell or anything like that at all. I mean, it's great, right? It actually smells very clean and, and it smells wonderful right now, which it's a big thing. I mean, when someone's getting their hair processed, obviously for us, because we're around it all day long, but even for our guests, you know, a chemical smell can be a little bit of a turn off and I don't smell anything. It smells actually great. Good. We love hearing that. 
Okay, so now she's all ready to set and, and process. So that was a really quick uh, technique that we did here. We will be using our uh, Lonza liquids later to uh, tone her. So we hope that you come back and check out her after photo that we're super excited for. Yeah, I wanna, a couple people have asked about seeing the end results. So obviously, she needs, Michelle's gonna process. Afterwards, there'll be photos here in the feed. So all you do have to do is come back and right at the top, we'll see the photos. Now, don't go anywhere because we're moving into some styling. Look at this. First, let's talk about this beautiful red that Tasha created here. Uh, looks like you got some depth at the root and then a beautiful, beautiful, vibrant red. So talk to us yeah. about that as you get ready for styling. Perfect. So I'm super glad that you asked because we actually did just launch a uh, uh, multiple different red colors with our 4G. And so what you're seeing right here at this step, because I believe every good red hat does have depth, we've used our five red red with 20 volume. And then utilizing uh, a technique, there's actually three different tonalities in this red head because even though, you know, we want it to be shiny and bright, I believe that everything should have a certain amount of dimension to it. But it, you shouldn't be able to see where it starts and stops and ends. So, um, I've used our seven red red, and I've used that with 30 volume, and I've used our seven copper copper, and I used that with 40 volume, and I used our six red red, and I used that with 30 volume. And we just, we smudged it all together so we had this really beautiful, multi-dimensional uh, red. And, and I, like I said, you can't really tell where anything starts or stops. So that's why it's one of my favorite things to do. Um, and this is like our new little swatch that we have too. So this kind of gives you an idea of what they look like. So is this, uh, is this a red kit that I'm looking at? It is. Okay, you so. can tell by the photo on the cover. <laughs> Beautiful red. Yeah. So that's, it, it says this is the autumn use collection. So is this a new collection from London? It's a new collection we just oh, launched. Um, so it should be hitting stores just now if you haven't seen it yet. Um, so be on the lookout for it because as you can tell, these reds are so, super vibrant. You know, this will be my first question as a, as a hairdresser. We always know that red is the hardest to keep. Yeah. So how, how have these reds been lasting? Are they long lasting reds? They are. And I love that you asked that because they, I have a secret weapon. It's not just, you know, me, but I use something called our color attach. And our color attach actually helps hang on to color molecules longer and uh, that's sprayed on prior to her color and then she has step two that we put on afterwards and then there's even take home stuff so something like color guard is the take home version of you know color attached so what she would do she would just spray that in her hair prior to getting in the shower and then um she would shampoo it with our color preserving line and our color preserving line gives up to 107 percent longer lasting uh, color. So with, with reds, I mean with all color, but reds especially, how you care for it and the take home product is, is crucial. It is crucial, yeah. yeah. So you have some, some major agreement coming in from Heather Wright. She says Lonza reds are the best. Thank and you. And she also says Lonza clay lightener is amazing. Uh, we did have a question a little bit earlier coming in from Rachel Cook. Yeah. Wondering about um, if, the, if the lightener would bleed and we told her it wouldn't because it's a clay lightener. Exactly. And if you're not using clay lighteners and you're doing kind of freehand hair painting, you definitely want to consider a clay lightener. And this is Lonzo's, which uh, everybody really is giving rave reviews for. All right, so let's Thank see you. some styling. Let's talk about yeah. styling products. So I've actually already like a rough dry her, obviously, and I used our foundation mousse. Um, with that. So I put a little bit of the keratin healing oil on it and then I just used a little bit of our brush through the spray. And okay, so a foundation mousse before drawing, is that yep. for body and texture? Body and texture. Yep. And I also like a little bit of grip when I'm going into doing any sort of styling. I feel like it makes it last longer. And the brush through hairspray is what you're, you're using now before ironing? I just did a quick um, spritz throughout the hair and I combed it through. And, and what we want to do here is we want to just create a tassel wig. And so you can see that I'm using my flat iron. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in from underneath and I'm sort of going to rock that, that flat iron. And I'm going to keep tension on my section. And I'm going to pull one way. I'm going to open my flat iron. And then I'm rocking it the other way. Notice I'm opening it. I'm pulling it. I'm opening it. And I'm going to keep doing this down the, ha the hair strand. And so this is going to create sort of like this 
body or this texture of the hair because we really just want like some movement in it. So as you can see, that gives us a really nice shape. It worked beautifully. Yeah. So again, you're, you're going in, you're turning one way, and then you're literally, is this the movement like that? Yeah, it's a rocking movement. So we're sort of swaying from one side to the other. In the other. So it's kind of like over, under, over. over. Yeah, exactly. So over, under. I haven't tried that before, so I want to yeah. try that. So, I mean, honestly, I think the reason that I chose using the flat iron, and I'll do this a lot, is because most women have a flat iron at home. Yeah. And so... Because everyone in the world bought a flat iron in the exactly, past five years. Exactly. Yeah. And you know what? I love my flat iron work. But typically, what clients want to be able to do is recreate the look yeah. that that we create. And curly irons things... can, can be more difficult to work with for sure. hairdressers and definitely for consumers. Exactly. Especially Marcel irons, which I love, but it can definitely be confusing if you're not a hairdresser. Exactly. All right. So let's. I think we have a good angle now. Kelly's right in position. So really, talk us through it. So I've smoothed my section, of course. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in. I'm sorry. I got to turn just a little bit. My cord short. Um, so I'm going to come in and notice this, this back blade here. I'm sort of heating it up and rocking it, right? And that gives me, gives me some space so that it won't add a huge crease. And then I'm opening it. So after I've twisted towards me, I'm opening it. Now I'm going to twist down and away from me, and I'm opening it. I'm twisting towards my body, and I'm slightly opening it. And then I'm twisting away and I'm opening it. And I'm just gonna to continue to do this down the hair shaft. And so this creates a really nice wave. And again, this is utilizing a tool that most people have at home already and that they're comfortable with. It's amazing that, um, you know, I've been a hairdresser for 30 years and people still keep coming up with new ways to wave hair. Yeah. With a flat iron. Like, I haven't seen this before. I mean, maybe, uh, maybe I'm some people have. Yeah, I've never yeah. seen exactly this technique before so i'm going to be uh, definitely giving it a shot good i love hearing that and i hope everyone at home does too so if you notice too i'm kind of coming on a diagonal i don't want to take a section that's too big um not not any bigger than my flat iron why, why diagonal you know what? i just think it creates a lot of softness so when it falls um it just makes it look really nice and easy. is that kind of your thing i remember last time thing. you did it on on your balayage you did it yeah. last time with, with foiling so you know is, is it uh, because of the way it kind of falls more naturally on the round head shape. Exactly, and that's what I like about it. You know, sometimes, and with styling, you can come in on a horizontal and that would be fine, but I feel like I'm, I can control the section really well coming in, and again, it's all about that round or that softness and, um, of uh, the head. You cut as well as color? I do. So do you do a lot of diagonal cutting too? Is that just kind of your thing? Um, you know what, I do it all. I mean, cutting I probably use a little less diagonal. Okay. I love that you asked that. Uh, but I just find it, it creates a lot of softness when working on a diagonal, especially with color. So, um, a lot yeah. of love coming in. Chris Leader says stunning, beautiful work, and so creative. Priscilla Gonzalez loves it. Heather Wright still Thank right you. there with you. That's gorgeous. Great job, Tasha. So lots of support out there, and that is a beautiful, simple technique. Now, what about the size of the iron? Does it make a difference the width of the plate? Uh, I love that you asked that. So yeah, I just don't want to take anything that's too big for my iron. So the longer the blades are on the iron, obviously the wider the section that you can go. Mm -hmm. um, I am pinching this together up here at the top. So I do have some of it sort of coming together. Um, also, my brush through hairspray is kind of helping me control that section too. Let's get a good shot of that for yeah. everyone at home. They're going to be wondering exactly what you're using. And it's still smooth and it's still working through that whole section. So it's not too sticky, but it's also something that like is a buildable hairspray that clients love. So roots I'm to ends with the spray now coming ends, in, yeah. pinching it together and let's see this technique again. So I've got my bottom blade, I'm rocking it, and then I'm gonna turn this iron towards me and release. I'm turning it away from me and I'm releasing. I'm turning it towards me and I'm releasing away and then towards me. And notice my section below is still really smooth, no knots or anything in it because if you flatter it in, it's, it's gonna stay that way too. Okay, so, so toward release, away release, toward release, away, or over release, under release. Yeah. Awesome. Now, uh, how did you first learn this technique? I'm always interested when people start to maybe try something new. Did someone teach it to you or? Did you just try and error? 
Yeah, uh, be still my heart. I love that you asked that. Thank you. Um, so actually, it just is a byproduct of me trying new things, you know, like um, wanting to come up with new techniques, new fun ways, like to get the, the looks that I wanted or things that I've never seen before, too. Um, and I, you know what? Everything is all about just giving it a shot one day. Mm -hmm. And so I did. And that actually turned out great. And I was like, oh, wow, I really like that. And, and you know what? My client did, too. So... And that's why I encourage her, Silas, to constantly, like, just have fun with what you're doing, you know? You miss all the shots you don't take, so just give something new a try. Great sports analogy there. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only one I got, yeah. so I'm glad you appreciated yeah. it. So I rocked at the beginning. I swiveled towards me. I released. I swiveled away from me, and I'm releasing. Towards me and releasing. Away from me and releasing. And so when I'm releasing, what it's doing is it's actually helping to create that depth in there um, and, and like that deeper S wave. And that's the purpose on why you would release that section from I mean, there. You know what I really like about this too? Is it's, it's really realistic. I mean, I think I understand the technique already and I feel like I could definitely use it on a client tomorrow. And that's my goal. Yeah, I want people course. to be able to use anything that, you know, I'm showcasing. Um, like I said, I'm still behind the chair. And so all of these things this is all stuff that I do, you know, this is, this is real life stuff and I wouldn't share it with you if it didn't work. Well, let's talk about that because I know you're a healing artist and yeah. an educator and you've got some classes coming up at the big event. I do. Tell us a little bit about Lonza's big event and the classes and guys, if you're interested, we're going to be putting up a code where you can attend this event and save 20%. So at our big event, uh, one, once a year, we come together as a tribe and we invite people in for extended education. We're super excited this year, uh, or for 2020, it's going to be in Nashville. And Nashville I, is a fun town. Yeah, yeah. Nash Vegas, right? Nash Vegas. <laughs> Um, and I'm super excited. I'm going to be teaching with Scott Sieber and Christina Carter. I'm going to be doing a perfect placement. And then I'm also teaching with my friend Sally Lemo. And we're going to be doing Blonde Squad. And then, you know what? We have a ton of other artists who have so a great So is it like, um, like an event where there's maybe like a big ballroom where everyone gets together oh, yeah. and you see stage presentations and then go to breakouts? Exactly. And then, of course, I'm sure there's some parties. Oh, yeah. I mean, lots of artists know how to have fun, that's for sure. Right. So. Now, is it is it open to anyone? So if anyone's watching here, maybe they're like, oh, Nashville and Join us. So anyone, anyone can yeah. come, any hairdresser that's interested in coming to a show, Nashville's a great town. It's going to be in, uh, is it February of 2020? February, yes. Yep, so that's not too far off. And we've got a code popping up right now for all our brain friends and fans and followers. You can save 20%. On this event itself is it a multi-day two or three day event it's a multi-day event um and you know we do a really amazing like runway show with some fun avant-garde hair and then you know we even have breakout classrooms if you wanted to purchase some hands-on classes and we have stage performances so really we try to encompass everything that you could want or need in this event and also fun of course we are fun and we love to have them because this is a fun industry. So we get to learn about like new products and, and everything exciting that we have going on. And so there's a question coming in from Chris Leader. Yeah. Uh, do you do you use the same amount of tension all the way down when you do this, or do you loosen the tension as you go towards the bottom? Great question. So I try to keep the same amount of tension throughout the whole section. So it's an even, and would you say it's a, it's a strong tension? And then no tension, and then strong tension, and then no tension. Yeah, even when I'm rocking away from myself, I'm actually keeping tension. So the only time that I lose tension is when I open the iron. So I'm going to rock this portion here. So strong. So strong tension. No, no tension. No tension. And then strong, strong. tension. No tension. Strong tension. No tension. And again, when I open that iron, it's so I can get those deep bevels that are in there. It's interesting, many years ago, I, um, I first saw the classic Marcel wave using a Marcel yeah. iron in a comb. And I worked and practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced, I have to be honest, thousands of times to even <laughs> get decent at it. Yeah. And I, I still never mastered it. Now I see all these alternative ways of getting this beautiful surface wave, and they're easier and they look better. Good. Which is really interesting because, you know, like for me, I'm super excited because I love that wave pattern. But the classic Marcel, which is beautiful, and it's kind of a French hairdressing, 
like thing that you have to master, uh, it's it's so difficult. One wrong move and the whole thing's out of line. Yeah, and yeah. you know what? I feel like that's something that's super hard for clients to recreate at home. Yeah, too. you can't do it on the client. Yeah, right. They can't so, do it you know, this is Not something possible. that, you know, maybe you don't want to start at the top. You just want the end sort of like this. But, you know, if you're, you could teach your client to do this. And truthfully, when we're showing our clients how to do things like this, this is client retention. Mm. You know, this is about, you know, building, building a, relationship. a relationship. So they want to be with you forever, you know, because there's nothing worse than going home for your appointment. And two days later, you can't recreate the look at all. And you just don't love what you have. So this is something that's simple. Again, using an iron that, you know, most people already have at home. And it's creating a beautiful and great result. And most of them probably bought it from their hairdresser a few years ago. I hope so. Yeah. And yeah. Like, you know that iron that I sold you, you should try it for this. Yeah, exactly. So, and that's what I really want to do is create like a ton of different looks, utilizing things that people already have, um, especially for our clients at home, you know, so that way we can keep all of our clients that we have and, and have fun and exciting things too. So it's, it's, it's good. I can't wait till you swing all that hair over the front of her shoulder. I know it. Yeah. So before I do that, I actually want to um, cut in some of our color illuminator. So let's have a look at that. This is like the second half of like my secret weapon um, for our color attached system. This is something that would be the final product that you would put on. And what it does is actually clears up the cuticle layer of the hair and it makes the hair beautiful and shiny so you can see the depth of the color even better. So come in close here as we spray this. You want to stay, you know, probably like a foot and a half away. And then we're going to get some decent spritz here. And we're going to comb through that section. So combing through all those waves after combing you put through that all in. those waves, yeah. Because yeah, again, we just want this is about movement here, you know. Like if it falls a little, that's okay. Like I just want, I just want there to be some shape and some some design to it, you know. So as you can see, it's really made like that color pop even more, uh, and it's it's just brilliant, you know. Fantastic. And here's a great this a side by side shot of just the hair blown smooth, and then adding that little bit of wave there on on Natasha. Looks gorgeous. Thank you. I always feel like, you know, adding some sort of wave or depth of dimension allows you to sort of see the color in, in a different light too. So it's extra fun. Well, and especially see. with this kind of like shadow yeah. where you see the darkness going through. Yeah, we're still keeping it modern by having that depth there. Um, and then again, like the multi-dimension, so you can start to pick up some of like the more copper tones and then some of the brighter tones. And even more, like I kept some of our depth back here with, I used more of our six red red with our seven red red back here and more of our seven copper copper. So you can sort of see that gradient in here. So again, that's what melting is all about to me. It's like not really knowing that there's a start and stop, but uh, you can see multi-dimensions in it. So it's, it's, it's just got a lot going on. Too. Well, Tasha, I want to thank you for another great live. Let's come right here in the middle. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, for those of you that want to see the finished result here on Michelle, just come back in about an hour or so and have a look through the top of the feed. We'll have an after photo so you can see the beautiful result. Thank you again for a Thanks fantastic for time. Thank you, Lonzo, for the ongoing support. And again, guys, take a look at that big event. Save 20%. The code's right here, Hairbrain20. We'd love to see you in Nashville. We're going to have a lot of fun over those three days. Yes. Peace out, everyone. Thank you.